They didn't expect compassion, not here, not like this. Scientists placed a mouse in distress. A companion watched, helpless. They expected inaction, indifference, but then the unthinkable. The mouse did something no one predicted. It ran to its fallen friend. It pressed, it nudged, it fought until breath returned. Revival, rescue, resuscitation. Not from a doctor, but from a mouse. Nerb. Imagine this. A mouse faced with a dilemma. Two companions. One, its familiar cage mate, unconscious and still. The other, a lively moving mouse. Which does it choose? What happens next will change everything you think you know about compassion in animals. The researchers presented this very scenario. And the results? Nothing short of extraordinary. The mice didn't just ignore the unconscious companion. They spent the majority of their time with it showing behaviours that seemed more like caring than instinct. At first it was gentle, sniffing, grooming, touching, but then the behaviour became more intense. Without hesitation, the mouse began physically interacting with its companion in an almost urgent way. This wasn't just curiosity, it was deliberate. Over 50% of the time the mouse opened its friend's mouth, pulling on its tongue, clearing the airway. And it worked. When researchers placed a non-toxic object in the unconscious mouse's mouth, the tongue-pulling action removed it 80% of the time. Remarkably, this behavior wasn't taught. In fact, even young mice, who had never witnessed such actions or interacted with anesthetized cage mates, instinctively exhibited the same response. This suggests that the drive to help others in distress is not learned, but hardwired. This experiment shattered everything we thought we knew. Mice don't just recognize suffering, they try to fix it. If mice, creatures so small, can fight for each other's survival, what does this say about the nature of life itself? In the most unexpected corners of science, discoveries are unfolding that echo the timeless wisdom of Buddhist teachings. Compassion and consciousness are not exclusive to humans. They are innate, woven into the very fabric of life itself. Buddhism speaks of the universality of compassion. In the Dhammapada, the Buddha reminds us that suffering is universal. All beings, whether human, animal or insect, experience pain, loss and longing. Buddhism teaches that compassion transcends species it is woven into the very fabric of existence. Where science seeks to measure, Buddhism invites us to experience, to feel the interconnectedness of all life. The Buddha compared our lives to the roots of a tree, each one of us connected, intertwined, unable to truly thrive without the others. The Avatamsaka Sutra tells us, one's suffering is the world's suffering, one's joy, the world's joy, we are not separate from one another, and compassion is not just a human trait, it is the heartbeat of life itself. Mice are just the beginning, because the evidence is everywhere if you know where to look. We often think of survival as a battle for resources where competition reigns, but what if nature tells a different story? What if animals aren't just fighting to live, but actively saving each other? Imagine a bear spotting a drowning crow. Most would walk away, but this bear reaches in and pulls the crow to safety. or a baboon, witnessing an antelope fall to a predator, steps in, not to fight the antelope, but to challenge the leopard for its life.
a cat, with no apparent reason, nudges a struggling fish back into the water. These moments challenge everything we think we know about survival. Could compassion, not competition, be a driving force of life? The research on animal altruism is nothing short of fascinating. Scientists have observed that when animals help one another, whether it's a bonobo comforting a distressed friend, or a mouse performing a life-saving gesture, they activate neural circuits tied to empathy and social bonding. These behaviors are not random. They are biologically encoded in the brain, driven by a survival mechanism. But here's where it gets even more intriguing. What if these behaviors are not only about protecting kin, but about connecting across species? Could it be that compassion is not just an emotional choice, but an evolutionary force, so powerful it transcends individual survival instincts? In fact, researchers have found that oxytocin, the love hormone, plays a crucial role in these prosocial behaviors. When oxytocin pathways are blocked in animals, their ability to help others disappears. Experiments with voles and primates reveal that when oxytocin is inhibited, they no longer bond, care for mates, or show empathy. This suggests that compassion is deeply embedded in the biological wiring of life itself. This echoes what the Buddha taught in the Metta Sutta, the boundless nature of compassion. Not limited to humans, but flowing across all beings. Why? Because at the core of every living creature is the same desire, to avoid suffering and find happiness. Buddhism emphasizes that compassion is not merely a fleeting emotional response, but a cultivated mindset, a state of being that transcends self-interest. In fact, long-term practitioners of loving-kindness meditation have elevated oxytocin levels, mirroring the brain activity seen in animals performing altruistic acts. Buddhism and science, two paths, one ancient, one modern, converging on the same realization. Compassion is not learned, it is innate. It is the pulse of life itself. From animals to humans, from the Metta Sutta to modern neuroscience, the evidence is clear. Compassion is not a mere choice. It is a profound shared force of nature, one that transcends species and time itself. But what if the explanation for these acts of compassion goes even deeper, into the very structure of the brain itself? In the 1990s, scientists discovered something extraordinary, mirror neurons. These are brain cells that fire not only when an animal performs an action, but also when it observes another doing the same. When one monkey sees another grasp an object, the same neurons activate in the observer's brain as if it were performing the action itself. It's as if the brain does not distinguish between self and other. This discovery challenged what we thought we knew about empathy. It's not something that happens just because we decide to care. It's built into our biology. These mirror neurons aren't limited to primates. Researchers have found similar mechanisms in a wide range of animals. Birds that mimic calls. I'm gonna give them a kiss. even rodents that show distress when a fellow rat suffers. In one experiment, when a rat witnessed another being subjected to an electric shock, it acted quickly to stop the suffering, sometimes even refusing food in order to protect its friend. This neural mirroring suggests that empathy isn't a conscious decision, it's an automatic, built-in response. We're not just observers of the world, we're designed to feel the experiences of others as if they were our own. Buddhism has long described a reality where no being exists in isolation. The doctrine of dependent origination, a pratityasamutpada, teaches that all things arise in dependence upon other things. The Buddha taught that our lives are interconnected in ways we often fail to see. Just as mirror neurons reveal that we experience the emotions of others in our own brains, Buddhism teaches that suffering and joy are not separate experiences. They ripple through the world, touching everything and everyone. One's pain is the world's pain. One's joy is the world's joy. 
Compassion, then, is not simply an ethical ideal. It is a fundamental, inescapable truth of existence. What if compassion is not something we have to learn, but something we uncover, something that has always been within us, waiting to be realized? If even mice, monkeys and birds exhibit this deep-seated response to suffering, could it be that compassion is not a human invention at all, but a biological force, a universal truth that has always connected us all? After all, if this behavior can be seen in creatures as diverse as rats, dolphins and humans, isn't it possible that this is the very thread that binds the entire web of life together? Perhaps the question is not why should we be compassionate, but rather what happens when we forget that we are all connected? When we choose to ignore the suffering of others, we are not only severing the threads that bind us to each other and the world, but we are also unraveling the very essence of our own humanity. If compassion is inherent in the fabric of life itself, then to abandon it is to lose what makes us human, to lose the ability to truly see, to feel, and to care.